Bangkok, Southeast Asia's hotspot, full of historic temples, vibrant food markets, and endless nightlife. The Thai capital has so much to offer, but what to prioritize, where to stay, and how to plan the perfect itinerary. We're gonna look at the essentials for visiting the Big Mango what you need to know about traveling, and some hidden gems you got to see. Everything for the beginners to you experts out there. By the way, this and so much more, including suggested hotels and detailed itineraries, you'll be able to download as an e-guide so you can have it offline in your pocket when you visit Bangkok. And stick around to the end of the video because I'm gonna explain how some of you will be able to download the guide for free. But right now I'm gonna give you a quickie video version. Bangkok is one of the most accessible places in Southeast Asia because it's a tourism hotspot. From the USA, you're likely going to have a layover before getting to Bangkok. From Europe, several major European cities offer direct flights to the Big Mango. And in Southeast Asia, almost all the major cities offer flights to Bangkok. From the airport, the transportation, what you need to know is that you're gonna need to take a taxi. You can take a train, but it takes more time, and if you're pulling luggage, I don't recommend it. The taxis, they should go by the meter. It could run about 200 to 300 Thai baht. Where to stay? I remember my first time I came to Bangkok, I stayed near Khao San Road, and that area, it's great if you just wanna explore the temples and stay in the old center but it's limited in terms of public transportation, dining, and lodging. Instead, what I recommend is staying out here in the Sukhumvit area along the BTS line. That'll give you plenty of options for lodging, plenty of options for dining as well. This and all sorts of hotel recommendations I'll list in the e-guide that you can download. How to book? Well, typically I use booking.com if I'm gonna have a hotel stay for up to five days. Now, if you're gonna stay five days, a week, or longer, that's when Airbnb starts to become a better option. They list hotels, and they also list apartments and some of the modern high-rises that you see around the city. You can get some budget options, or you can get some really cool luxury options that give you an insight into how the people in Bangkok live. What to see and do? Well, brace yourself, because when you arrive in Bangkok, there is so much to visit. Temples are everywhere in Bangkok, and if there's ever a place where you can see more temples in one visit so conveniently, it's here in Bangkok. You can knock out two to three temples a day and right up there we got Wat Socket with the Golden Mountain. But the big one is the Grand Palace. In there you're gonna see the temple with the famous Emerald Buddha and you can also tour the King's Quarters. Go over to Wat Po and you'll know Wat Po because that's the temple with the big reclining gold Buddha. And then getting over here to Wat Socket in the afternoon now the temple itself is nothing in particular, but up at the top you get that golden pagoda with the 360 panoramic view across the big river here in Bangkok. And then on the other side you have Wat Arun, Temple of the Dawn. It's beautiful to see in the morning light with all the light shimmering off the tiles or in the afternoon at sunset. Let's talk shopping because Bangkok has so many shopping malls that frankly I don't know how they stay open and how they're supported. I'm gonna list three for you starting with Terminal 21 where there are plenty of mid-range shopping options there. You can take the BTS, it's about three stops down to Siam Square, and there you're gonna find the MBK shopping mall, the classic shopping mall in Bangkok. Just nearby, brace yourself for the upper end shopping with the massive and more upscale Siem Paragon and Central World. And then the third and the most luxurious, the newest, and what they say is Southeast Asia's biggest mall is the Icon Siem on the river banks of the Chao Praia. Many brands have their flagship stores here and like most malls in Bangkok, it's more about the experience. Besides the shopping, it offers a cinema, jaw-dropping views of the river and skyline and plenty of dining options, both on the top floors and then down on the bottom floor next to the 7-Eleven, you're gonna get your good budget options. If you want a unique perspective and a unique view on Bangkok, 
rock up in the sky, we'll head over to Chinatown to the Mahakong Tower. It looks like a giant Jenga tower, the way it's shaped. They say it's the highest observation deck in Thailand, and it's not for those who are afraid of heights because that skywalk, that big giant piece of glass out there. Wow! Now there's so much more to see and do in this capital city of Thailand, but I can list them all here in the video or it's gonna go way too long. So check out that e-guide link down in the description. Now stick with me because I'm gonna explain what and where to eat here in Bangkok. Now let's talk food options because really this is one of the major reasons I come to Bangkok. It's simply to eat. I can recommend several different markets. One is Silom Soy 20. Get there early in the morning. The locals come and go buying their supplies, setting down and eating at different little vendors. I recommend stopping for some warm ginger soup with some silky tofu thrown in and some crispy dough as well. Peckaberry Soy 5 Food Street is off the beaten path for most tourists, but don't let that put you off. There's delicious food there and a truly local vibe. Get there anywhere from around 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Chinatown is one of my favorite spots. In the daytime, you can roam the market, stop at all the different stalls, but at night, the place comes alive. And hit up Ped Mark on the Sukhumvit, around about Soy 35, and this is the place that was opened up by the famous food vlogger, Mark Weens with this Pad Kripal. Get out there and explore on those little side streets. It may seem off the beaten path, you may have questions about it, but you're going to open your mind to so many new foods and such great experiences. Now let's talk about snacks, coffee, and nightlife. 7-Eleven will be your go-to for quick, cheap, easy snacks. They have everything from coffee, all your bathroom supplies, and if you're in need of a cheap Leo beer, that'll set you back 40, 41 Thai baht normally. And of course, bottled water. <laughs> For coffee, well, there are many coffee shops all over Bangkok, and there are new ones popping up all the time that I can't even keep up. Number one is Rise Coffee, tucked away in a side street off the Sukhumvit near the Flown Chit BTS stop. Across the street, across the Sukhumvit, there's a Toby's Coffee, and there's a few different locations all around Bangkok, but this is an Aussie-style stop with plenty of breakfast items and a cool vibe. One of my favorite coffee shops all around the world is one from Japan. It's called Percent Arabica, and they have a few different locations here in Bangkok, and the one I prefer is at the Econ Siem Mall. Go there for the coffee and stay for some chic, modern Instagram photos. Now I know what you're thinking. Where can I get a beer but with a perfect panoramic view of Bangkok? A sunset drink. Well, you're in luck. I have several different options for you. The one you want to go to to get the photo and the one everybody talks about is Labuya State Tower the world's highest sky bar. It's multi-leveled. The gold dome sets on top and was the backdrop for the movie Hangover 2 with unforgettable views even if it comes at a price. At night, you have several different options to go crazy and let yourself go. Number one, well, that's Khao San Road in the old town. The place comes alive, music from every corner, people drinking and having a good time. Over by the Sukhumvit, there are two different locations. One is Nana Plaza Soy 4, and the other one, of course, is the famous Soy Cowboy. Now, those places have all sorts of go-go bars filled up with Thai women, Thai lady boys. Even if it's not your intention to participate in the activities, you should get a drink, sit there, watch the whole world go by and the night come alive. If you guys are enjoying this video, please give it a like or a thumbs up. Also, make sure you're subscribed down below. Join the community. Let's talk about transportation in Bangkok because Bangkok is known for its bad traffic, but good news is there's plenty of public transportation options. The SkyTrain and the Metro MRT, they're super clean, they're air conditioned as well and organized, and I suggest you take those, especially if you wanna beat the traffic. Taxis like this one, well, they're inexpensive as well. Just when you get in, make sure they're going by the meter, which my man is here. Sometimes they don't wanna go by the meter, especially if they're picking you up in tourist locations. Now, what about the tuk-tuks? They look like a lot of fun, 
but really they're more for tourism than they are for transportation. Do it at night when all the LED lights are lit up and the exhaust is and they're driving around town. Have a few beers along the way. And if you negotiate a price for a fixed one hour time, they'll drive you around to many of the big sites. The other option I wanna mention should be a to-do when you're in Bangkok if you're up for it. It's a motorbike taxi, kind of risky, and it's not gonna be those who are a little bit nervous because you go without a helmet and you're weaving in and out of traffic. But for me, I love it. And especially during rush hour, you wanna avoid the taxis because they're gonna be sitting in traffic. Those motorbikes zip their way through traffic. Look at all these cars we're passing. And you won't forget the adventure. Bangkok, like New York City, like Paris, like Rome, it's a big city. Well, the itinerary would be at minimum four days, but if you can, give yourself six to seven days because that way you have a buffer, you have some off days. In case it's pouring down rain one day or the museum or the temple you wanna to go to is closed that day, you're gonna need the time when you're in Bangkok. When to visit. Keep in mind, Bangkok has the most reliable weather between December and March. The hottest months of the year are April and May with the average daily maximum at 35 degrees. The coolest month of the year is January with an average daily maximum still of 32 degrees Celsius and an average low of 22 degrees Celsius. And for me and for the rest of the world, that sounds great. Learn some Thai. Most Thai speak English, especially here in Bangkok, but the further you go off the beaten path, the less likely they are to speak English. Cup of cup, bye. And the more you're going to be relying on an app like Google Translate. Knowing a few phrases, well, that's gonna bring a smile to the already friendly faces of the Thai people. So for a couple of phrases, I've enlisted a friend here. Her name is Ju, she's from Bangkok. So what, the cup? <laughs> so that's the first one. How to say hello. For a man, you say sawadee kap. For a woman? Oh, sawadee kap. And thank you. That's the other basic phrase you should have in mind. You say kapun kap for a man and for a woman? Kapun ka. Kapun kap. Kapun kap, Ju. Thank you. Such a nice person. Everywhere in Thailand, the people are great. Now, before you get to Thailand, I recommend you download an app, one of those Thai phrase apps, so you always have it available. Also, make sure you have Google Translate ready to rock on your phone. Communication, how are you gonna contact the rest of the world? How are you gonna get on the internet? Well, the good news is the internet is lightning fast in Thailand and indeed all of Southeast Asia. As soon as you land at the airport, go to one of those SIM card booths so you can have data all the time on your phone. You don't need to rely on Wi-Fi. That being said, make sure your phone is unlocked, free to use outside your home country, and you have a free SIM card slot. Electricity. Thailand runs on 220 volts like Europe. An adapter will help you take that plug of yours for your smartphone and convert the plug so you can fit it into a socket that works here. The main type of socket plugs are C and E. I find the latter, the E is more common and works best for me and that's the adapter I carry when I travel around Thailand. How much? Well, Thailand is cheap, but Bangkok is the most expensive place in the country. But still, you'll be amazed by the good service and prices you find. You can really find some budget options. Go with a backpacker route, eat at the local food markets every night and save your coins. But look around, you'll find a wide array of options. Carry bots, cash is king in Thailand. So you're gonna need your Thai bots. Credit cards can be used, but for the most part, you're gonna be using cash everywhere you go around Thailand. So as soon as you arrive at the airport, go to the ATM, the bank machine, and pull out some cash. You're gonna need it for that taxi ride into town, and you're gonna need it to buy that first cold Leo beer. When to leave and where can you go? Consider that once you're here in Bangkok, it's easy to zip around to other places in Thailand, like Chiang Mai, like down south to the island of Koh Samui, or you can head off to other Southeast Asian countries. I'm talking about Singapore, Vietnam, or Indonesia. All of this and more is in the e-guide, link down in the description. It's got Google map links in there, more hotel recommendations, more food markets, more of everything. And you can download it, have it as a PDF when you're buzzing around Bangkok on the motorbike taxis or in and out of the BTS SkyTrain. And for my viewers, I'm off 
offering the first five downloads for free via the newsletter. Have you heard about the newsletter? It's full of travel tips and hacks and other video content that you may not find here on the YouTube channel. And right now, the Bangkok Essential Guide. Link is down in the description. Now click on this video here next. I think you're going to enjoy it. Yeah.